Impact Leaders, the podcast on leaders focusing on impact investment and performance with purpose, supporting the companies that are solving the world's biggest challenges. Impact Leaders is brought to you by Fast Forward 2030 and Real Changers. Visit fastforward2030.com to learn how to include the global goals into your business models and realchangers.com to find talent and careers with impact. And this is your host, JP Dolman. So in today's episode of Impact Leaders, we have uh, Damien Lardou as a guest. Um, hi, Damien. Welcome. Hi, JP. How are you? Very well, very well. Thank you so much for being with us today. Damien uh, is the head of Impact Investing at EQ Investors. EQ is an award-winning chartered financial planning firm with over 60 staff in London and 2,000 clients all around the UK. Uh, their emphasis on doing things the right way has struck a chord with people who are tired of being treated as numbers by organizations only interested in growing their profits. They are one of the fastest growing wealth managers in the UK, uh, but they won't be selling out. They are committed of, to being a staff-owned business. Um, at EQ, they have a strong sense of being a member of a, a wider community. They are proud to be one of the first UK companies to be awarded a big corporation status, uh, an international recognized standard for companies that believe in businesses as a force for good. And their positive impact portfolios are a unique pos- a proposition for clients who care about how and where their money is invested. So let's start with the question that we're trying to help listeners understand more about, uh, Damien. So what is impact investing? So the, um, I mean, the simple idea of impact investing, exactly as you said, is to align people's money with their, with their values. You know, the, the idea is that, you know, you can, you know, uh, utilize your, your money, your finances to help make a positive impact on society and the environment. That's a very simple definition. Perfect, perfect. Um, and uh, in terms of the kind of definitions and clarifications, you know, if I look at your website uh, on your current landing page uh, and your ma- main initial message, it says that EQ investors are financial planners. Uh, however, you know, you actually are, as, as we know them, you know, wealth managers uh, and you act, you know, yourself as a portfolio manager. Um, I know that uh, many of the listeners understand the roles, synergies and differences, but could you explain a bit more about how you work and how the different parts of the company come together? Sure. So, so you, you're absolutely right. You know, historically, we were a wealth management firm, um, you know, looking directly with uh, private clients and, and charities. Um, so we've got, you know, 15 advisors, you know, in, in-house. Um, and then also... That's one five, 15. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, alongside those financial advisors, there's a number of, of teams, you know, the uh, technology team, which is uh, building the impact calculator, for example, that we'll talk about, and, uh, and a great client portal as well. Uh, we have a marketing team helping us with putting together the impact report. That we, to, that we will be talking about as well. And then also what's really important to us is to, is to um, have you know, um, you know, a, a very good, well-established investment team you know, providing to clients you know, the, the best proposition so that they can achieve their financial goals. So we've got 11 people within our investment team and those people will be managing money and also doing research in terms of asset allocation research and in terms of fund section research to put together the the best portfolios for clients to achieve their goals perfect uh, and kind of what are you offering uh, at eq that are, uh, that are that other similar companies are not is there a key differentiator sure. um so i would say one of the i mean one of our key differentiate differentiating factors is um our experience in impact investing which we've had for the last 10 years i mean Going back, you know, t- 10 years ago as a firm, we uh, helped set up a macrofinance institution in uh, Sierra Leone in Africa. And, um, and we also um, launched a private equity f- uh, fund in 2011. So we ha- we've had you know, a lot of experience in impact investing. I'm, I'm probably, you know, 
as a wealth management firm working with private clients, you know, a key turning point for the company was in 2012 when I joined the firm, when we launched um, the EQ Positive Impact Portfolios with the idea that, you know, we could bring impact investing to the masses. You know, we wanted Mr. and Mrs. Smith to be able to invest, you know, from 100 pounds to, you know, several millions. Um, and in, in, into investments that can make a positive impact on society and environment. So that's really a key differentiating factor um, um, of, of our proposition. And also, you know, we, for us, you know, it's, uh, it's really important to not to rest on our laurels. So, you know, with our clients, we're on an impact journey. And, you know, we, we spend a lot of time engaging with fund managers, engaging with organi organizations, um, to try to push the boundaries when it comes to impact. Because what's really important is not only to select the right companies, you know, where their intention to make the impact is really there, but it's also really important to report on the impact that's being achieved. And uh, impact reporting is the fast moving a part of our process. So we work with a number of, um, you know, people around the industry to, to help push those boundaries. Perfect, perfect. And then I, I, I was going to add, perhaps I really like. Uh, I was watching that uh, John, John Spears, who is the 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 the, 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 the lead on, on, on the organization, has a, a bit of a short video on the on the on your website, um, and he talks about EQ. And then for those that don't know, EQ is the emotional quotient, and there that's that's where the name comes from, and hence the alignment uh, to values and and what people believe in, right? Um, and, and we definitely talk about. Uh, your 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 model the port and the report in, in some of the other questions so thank you for mentioning that um, so in terms of uh, of understanding a bit more about you know the funds you know so where you mainly get your funds from and you mentioned a little bit about that and, and where you invest so uh, from previous conversations we had I understand you currently manage uh, over a hundred million yes. uh, pounds in funds um, so where where do the majority of the funds come from so I mean, so we've got you know two types of um, of um, if you want of businesses. I mean, we have uh, private clients who are coming directly to us and uh, and would like you know their money to to make that positive impact and also need the financial planning element. Um, and then we also have financial advisors who have their own clients um, and then come uh, and. And, and make our propositions available to their own clients. So there's, you know, there's two ways to to work with uh, with, with with us, either being your either you are a private client or a financial advisor. We we can help all those people, you know, make a positive impact. And that's actually quite important because for us, we, you know, spreading the message of uh, of impact investing and making it available to as many people people as possible is really important and and we can and probably will we'll mention about sort of stumbling blocks we're facing with financial advisors and why impact investing is not you know r rising as quickly as, as as we think it could so in terms of um uh, you know institutional investors those are a very small percentage right now or close to zero right in terms of where you source your funds from um so you we also work with um with charities and you know and uh, institutional investors, charities, pension funds. Actually, we we do have quite a few large clients. Mm -hmm. uh, you're absolutely right. You know, our, our historically our core business has been um, uh, has been you know working with private clients. When uh, John Spears uh, took over the business in in 2014, um, he uh, invested a lot in in our proposition. He invested a lot in our investment team. So by you know. Increasing, you know the um, you know the depth of the research and the quality of the service being provided. Not only could we cater to the needs of private clients, but also our process was robust enough and appealing enough for institutional investors to also work directly with us. Perfect, perfect. Um, so, if I understand, uh, as I understand it, you operate mainly um, as a funds of funds. Which is uh, uh, again for for uh, for some of the listeners that do not know, uh, means that you invest in other funds that they they that they invest in other assets and companies, right? Uh, such as I think we talked about Hermes, which is one of the of of the uh, funds where you have uh, allocated some of your um, money. Uh, so how much is uh, allocated out of the 800 million to impact investing? 
Yes, so we have um, 120 million mm -hmm. um, allocated to uh, impact investing, and this is um, you know very fast growing. Uh, you know, more than doubled over the over the last year. Okay, and what uh, kind of characteristics or variables do you look at normally when you um, are making the, your decision to allocate funds to to these other funds? Sure. So. Um, you know, it's um, so. We, what's really important is that we're not reinventing the wheel. So, you know, when we build a portfolio, if we to help clients achieve their financial goals, what's really important is is you know building a portfolio with the right asset allocation, and then also having and uh, having a very strong view on long term themes. You know, being healthcare, for example, or you know environmental mm -hmm. equities. So, we, we we take that sort of if you want big picture view. And once informed with that big picture view, then we can look for those fund managers which will, who will help us to um, express those views by investing directly in, in, comp in, in companies. So, so that's uh, step one. Then the step two, when we look for the funds, um, so really what we're looking for first is the intentionality. Mm -hmm. of impact you know does the fund manager and the team working alongside him or her really willing to say companies you know contributing to solutions that's really important you know um so that's first point the, and 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 not only we want to hear them saying so but also what we do is that we want to look at the underlying companies themselves so it looks through the, the phone, if you want, and making sure that what we're seeing there is aligned with what they say. Mm -hmm. Are they really walking the talk, yeah. so to speak? Yeah. Um, then also what we're really looking for is the concept of um, additionality, of impact. So what does that mean? Is that you select companies which are helping to make an additional impact. So if they had not developed that product or had not developed that service, this impact would not, would not have been achieved. And then sorry, just one second. So, can you explain that again? So, additionality is that um, f from yeah from the funds perspective. So, what else they can do, or from the assets perspective? So, from from the company's pers yeah. perspective. So, if I give you an example, you know, um, if you invest in water, yeah. you let's say you invest in Thames Water, for example, um, you know they've been providing water to our tap, yeah. um, you know, for decades and decades. So, you know, the impact. The making is material because if we don't have water, obviously we will be in a in a tough situation. But it's not really additional. So if you go into emerging markets and you're investing in an infrastructure company which is helping to provide water to populations who didn't have access to water before, this is what we call an additional impact. Okay. So, so we're really keen, you know, when we when we think about um, you know making an impact, obviously uh, making an impact in the emerging markets as per you know the United and Sustainable Development Goals mm -hmm. is really important. So that concept of additionality is something we like. But then, but then you know you want also that impact to be measured, and that's the third point we're looking for, which is you know the measurability of the impact. So we want the fund managers to engage with the companies to collect some data and tell us you know the impact they've been achieved not only through the companies they're investing in but also through the engagement they're making with the companies because i think it's really important to mention that there isn't a perfect company so you need the fund manager and that's the reason why we're paying them you know the, the, the you know a fee is that we are looking for you know looking for you know a uh, very strong engagement to push companies to improve their practices mm -hmm. And and we'll we'll come back to the reporting and the tracking, but just before I move to that, I wanted to just double check with you. In average, uh, you know, if I am a fan that want to come to talk to uh, Damien and EQ, what average uh, ticket size or investment do you make, or have you made out of the 120 million so far? Uh, I mean, it's, um, it can vary between um, two to two ten. Mm -hmm. Probably what's worth mentioning is that. Um, Although we've got you know 120 million, as I said, um, um, you know about you know 50 percent of our 15 percent of our assets into mm -hmm. directly into impact investing, um, a number of our clients as well um, who are in sort of more maybe traditional portfolios, um, they also have ex exposure to impact. And um, you, if we take our what we call our best ideas portfolios here, mm -hmm. um, they will have exposure to uh, funds which are impact funds and. 
we, you know, the, 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 if you want the portfolio managers of our best ideas portfolios, more traditional portfolios, really like the long term story, let's say, for example, of healthcare or environmental equities, and will add some exposure, you know, of these uh, themes into, and into, into the best mm -hmm. ideas portfolio. Yeah. So if you want, you know, we are, with a number of, our, uh, with all our clients, is they are actually experiencing impact. Some are going for pure impact, and some are going for maybe a light touch of yeah. impact. Yeah, okay. And and that is worth asking as well. So all of these uh, kind of models and approaches are all in-house or you're not benchmarking from, from any other uh, companies or, yes. Or, yes, or, or, or famous you know, portfolio managers or wealth managers? Or so uh, all the research is done in-house. That's why we've got 11 people in our, in our investment team. Um, so we do... Uh, use, for example, some macro research from external providers. And we just want to, you know, make sure that we keep our, you know, our eyes open on what's happening in the world. But, you know, when it comes to fund research, when it comes to, you know, our decision-making process, everything is done in-house. Perfect. Um, and uh, what returns are you um, are aiming for? So, uh, it's, uh, so that's a very tricky question. <laughs> because... Um, the, what we do with clients is that they invest for the long term. Mm -hmm. you know, we're talking, you know, pension money. So they might be investing for the next 10, 15, 20, if not more years. So the, uh, you know, the, the returns w which are going to be achieved, you know, are very much depends as well on how the markets themselves are going to perform. Mm -hmm. So it's not, an, it's, not, um, it's not a mandate where we'll say, you know, we're going to give you a return of 5% every single year. No, it's not the way it works. Um, so the, the, what we, the way it works with, with private clients is that you build a portfolio based on the risk profile, mm -hmm. you know, how much risk they are uh, willing to take and able to take. And also, what are their financial goals? You know, so if if they need a lot of uh, growth, you know, in their pension, for example, to achieve their financial goals, it means that they probably would need to take more risk yeah. to achieve those goals yeah. in the future. So that's the way it works: is that we don't promise a return, but we build a portfolio to help clients achieve their goals in the future. Okay, so that's from the client's perspective, investing into EQ. And then from the other side, in terms of, you know, what you would expect from the funds, getting funds from you, do you actually set the, some targets to them? Yes, uh, yes, you're absolutely right. So um, when we uh, invest in a fund, uh, the idea is that we want to maximize both the financial return and the impact. So... Um, we talk about later about the impact, yeah. but on the financial return side, we compare the uh, the fund's performance to a mainstream benchmark. So if you take global equities, for example, and you talked about Hermes, the Impact Opportunities Fund, which we which we like and which we've uh, invested in, um, we'll compare that uh, fund's performance against MSCI World Index, or so the very mainstream um, index, because. We invested in those strategies because we, be we believe that they will outperform over the long term. And we believe they are actually very strong, um, uh, very good you know, um, uh, investment vehicles. But obviously, to track performance over time, you need, you need a benchmark. And actually, for our portfolios as well, we've, we've, we've got a benchmark. So it's, um, it's, yeah, it's an industry practice to make sure that um, yeah, you're, you're delivering what you're supposed to. Okay. Perfect. Um, and uh, any other, w what else do they need to show for you to be kind of comfortable or attracted to, you know, sure. investing in them? So um, probably the first thing I would say is transparency. That's really important. I think, you know, the asset management industry maybe in the past have, um, uh, maybe have had some practices where, you know, they're not really transparent. And even today, actually, if you're an investor, it's very hard for you to know where you're investing mm -hmm. in. Uh, you know, you may have on the fact sheet the top 10 holdings, but uh, there are many m other holdings that you can't see. So for us, you know, we want transparency in terms of what they're investing in. Uh, we've, we want clarity on the process, how they're going to generate the financial return we're expecting them to, how they... Um, are they going to achieve the impact that they're mm -hmm. claiming they will and how they're going to measure it? And, um, and then also, actually, uh, we want them to be willing to be on the journey with us. Mm -hmm. So what do I mean by that? Is that, you know, impact investing is a fast-moving 
industry and a fast moving way of rethinking um, you know investing yeah. and um, and because it's fast moving uh, that no one can rest on on his on her laurels you know you need to keep you know your eyes open your ears open you need to keep challenging yourself you know keep pushing the boundaries so we want for managers to do the same perfect perfect and then perhaps uh, because I have had conversations with you you know uh, before and I was lucky enough to be in, in one of the presentations on the report um, wh what I picked up is that you uh, uh, do work on on your relationships with them so you kind of study them uh, you meet them uh, you know you take some time maybe maybe even uh, I think somebody said a couple of years until you build a relationship and an understanding of what they're, or what they're doing until you actually make a decision Yes, yeah. that that absolutely right. You know, there's a, you know, the mm, when we invest, and that's very much the idea of impact investing. This is long term investing. You know, we're not talking. You know, we don't want to be involved in short termism. You know, it's um, so when you allocate the capital to a fund manager, you're going to do it for the next three, five, if not ten years. Yeah. So, so you need to have you know confidence that they're going to help you achieve your financial and impact goals. So you're absolutely right. You know, we on we will have you know a very deep. Uh, di um, and an ongoing discussion with those managers. I mean, you mentioned Hermes. So, as an example, we were in discussion with them 18 months prior to the launch of their fund, and we've had that very healthy um, and um, yeah, and uh, very healthy discussion with them in terms of how they wanted to build that uh, that fund they launched. So that's that's really important nice, to us. Nice. Yes. And any, any other any other one of your investees that are worth mentioning that you know. Because we we mentioned one already sure, so many sure. times, uh, yeah. it's also yeah. like we're advertising <laughs> them, but yeah, it's not, they, no, not, there's no advertisement going. Yeah. Um, so um, I mean, we talked about um, uh, equities. Um, obviously, it might be worth talking about bonds as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a there's a fund manager who, um, who you know we we've been working for years with with, with him and, and actually and his team as well, um, called Simon Bond, and he's um, he launched. Um, about five years ago, what's called the Strenidol, Columbia Strenidol, UK Social Bond Fund. And um, it was um, seeded by Big Issue Invest. Mm -hmm. And um, really the idea being uh, be behind that, uh, that fund is that you, you can you know, help you know, um, use your capital to make a positive impact um, you know, through the fixed income market. And by doing so, you can have access to companies which are very different and organizations very different from what you're seeing in the listed equity market. Mm -hmm. If I just give you some examples, you know, for example, it's very much a UK centric fund. Um, so you can help uh, finance um, uh, universities for example, so Manchester University, for example, they've been raising some funds to help them um, refurbish their premises. You know, that could be one way. Um, charities as well. I mean, I, I think it's it's probably not known by uh, many people that there are some very um, good charities in terms of, you know, in terms of the robustness of their um, of their balance sheets, you know, their financial strengths, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and they're coming to the market to raise capital. And that's what's called well, the retail charity bonds. Yeah. And Simon Bond and his team are helping and uh, those um, charity to, to, to raise money in the capital uh, market. So yeah, that's really a, a fund that, we've, that we, we really like as well. Yeah. Excellent. And that is basically, yeah, fixed income uh, uh, and, and bonds, which is uh, another way, because otherwise they'll be kind of struggling to go and fundraise, you know, on, on they cannot go to equities, they cannot go anywhere else, right? Exactly. Fantastic. Okay. So um, um, just just before just before we jump uh, to, to measurement and, and, and tracking, I just want to just, um, uh, you may uh, touch on a risk profile and, and building risk profile for clients. Uh, and, and, and you, I think you have a couple of different tools that uh, clients can use, I think online or, mm -hmm. or it's all through the FIs or how, how does it work? So, um, I mean, for clients to assess, the this is the, this is the normal individual, by the way. Sure. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you know, um, you know, um, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You know, if they want to, um, t I mean, to have a look at what we call their um, their financial health, we've developed yeah. an uh, online t tool called the Financial Health Check, and basically they can put details, you know, about their about their uh, financial situation. And then, 
it will help them find out whether or not they will be able to achieve their financial goal in the future. I mean, this is, this is a tool which is, uh, if you want, helping people to think about yes. it. But what's really important is I think a financial tool is just a starting point yes. for then a deeper conversation with a financial planner who can maybe adjust the calculations and have that sort of deep conversation with the uh, with, with the client to find out more about their financial situation and then build with them, um, uh, you know, a plan which will help them meet that their goals and the goals not only in terms of financial goals but also it could be their impact goals. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, either through their investments or even maybe through you know giving, you know, through philanthropy. So that's the so that's you know one tool exactly that people have online. And then also obviously with a financial planner. Um, a client will uh, spend some time thinking about the risk they're able and willing to take. Um, but with that, you need to be compliant. You, 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 I mean, you, there's some, I know there's some companies um, called the robot advisors where you can do it online. Well, in our experience, most people, when it comes to their, f- um, you know, their, their investments, you know, money they've been, uh, you know, accumulated over the years. You know, after you know a lot of hard work, they like being reassured by, by a human. human. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And this is mainly basically Q and A's, right? So there is no specific kind of a methodology. It's just yes. about exploring. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Um, yes. And uh, and then just again, just to finish that part, um, in terms of time, how long does it take for somebody to do the financial check uh, tool, and then how long it would take um, normally, you know, to actually sit down with the financial planner? Okay, I mean, I think you can go online for a financial health, health check tool and spend, you know, uh, 10, 15 minutes and have, you know, a first time idea of how um, healthy, so to, so to speak, uh, your f- financial situation is. But then once you have a sit down with a financial planner, then it very much depends on your own situation. You know, it could be, it could be an hour discussion, it could be a longer discussion depending on your personal c- circumstances. Excellent. Okay. Um, so, I know you have an excellent, you know, impact report. Uh, I mean, this is 2018, uh, which is the one that I, I, I attended to the presentation, uh, which I highly recommend for people to read. Um, but can you share with us how do you measure uh, and, and want to measure your impact? Sure. So, um, I mean, when we talked about impact investing, probably what I haven't stressed enough is the importance of the type of companies you invest in. So. Really, our idea is to, you know, contribute to, you know, to to solutions. Is to invest in those companies, usually innovative by nature, mm-hmm. w- uh, which are developing products and services, helping to tackle the many challenges that we all familiar with. You know, around you know education, around you know uh, healthcare, around you know uh, climate change. So. To, to, to do that, we believe that, you know, then the, the focus on our impact reporting should be first on the products and services themselves, you know. Mm-hmm. How those products and services are helping to, let's say, meet, for example, the, uh, um, the, the UN, uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, for example. Um, so to do that, um, we will look at um, every single company we invest in. So if you take... Um, a medium risk profile, a balanced risk profile. There's about 600 uh, companies within our equity portion. Um, And we will look at every single company and then look at the data they are reporting in in regards to the impact they're making through their products and services. And then based on that data, we know that if you invest in, in, in our portfolios, you will own a fraction of those companies. Mm-hmm. And then, being a you know a, you know a small shareholder of those companies, you are partly responsible for the impact those companies have achieved. And this is how we can report on the impact that clients have achieved over the last year through the investments. Um, but obviously, you know, you look at every company, and um, you know, there's they're, they're, if you they're all making an impact but in a very different way. So there's about hundred different impact indicators mm-hmm. that we've collected data for. What we've been publishing on and uh, reporting on are those indicators who, uh, which are the most common 
and the most published by the companies we invest in. So we've, you have in our report, you know, 12 indicators, six social, six environmental, um, you know, going from, let's say, the amount of renewable energy being generated to the number of patients being treated, for example. Yeah, so the idea here is that we want to help people to really understand with the, the, their own investment into the portfolios how much impact they've achieved. Um, over over the last year. Perfect. Okay, and and, and I know I, I mean we, we don't want to go into like the full detail of it, but I definitely um, I definitely recommend the the positive impact portfolios uh, investors impact report 2019. Um, I, I'm trying to remember is it is it available on the on the online as well. Exactly. Yes. Uh, so people can go and and have a look, uh, and there you can uh, clearly see on the first page, uh, uh, kind of over the last year, it says one million invested in the adventures portfolio has, and then you have uh, specific uh, m measurements uh, that they um, that the company are, uh, as the Damien mentioned, um, uh, putting all together, um, uh, bringing everything together, and then uh, finding a way to actually show to people how how their funds and their money is is impacting the world um, which is fascinating again uh, uh, sometimes we underestimate how much work you know it goes behind this you know how much you know some people sometimes wonder you know uh, when when they don't know you know what do the research teams do and what do you know uh, this is what this is what they do you know they exactly. help us you know understand and actually measure everything that we're doing uh, so 100 impact indicators to to try to summarize them into into 12 is is, is quite is quite some work um, and also there is no um, there is so far there is the SDGs as a reference so the, mm -hmm. the sustainable development goals but obviously everyone is uh, there is no one way of measuring right? Yes, uh, right so everyone is trying to come up with a system yes. Uh, yes. or a methodology uh, as I understand that you have come you have come up with yours yes. um, and uh, and I think there is a, a, a challenge there around how do we then you know, bring everything and everyone together to actually show that we're really achieving uh, all the goals by by 2030, as as we're aiming, though, right? Um, yeah. I have seen I have seen uh, some uh, presentations in terms of the evolution what we have achieved so far, and basically we are uh, still depending on which country and in which uh, theme or sector or, or or target we are quite advanced in some, but quite well off. Um, uh, the mark on some others. So, um, uh, so on that note, do you actually feed this information to any other organization or? So, yeah, I mean that's. Um, I mean it's really important. It's um, it's a collegial work. Is that so? Uh, um, there's many different projects we've been working on. We've worked more, uh, on one with the UN in regards to. Um, um, putting together some um, in, uh, KPIs and indicators that people can use when it comes to impact reporting. We're also part of um, a project um, that actually um, uh, Bridges Ventures and a few others have uh, helped uh, set up called the Impact Management Project. Um, we publish on our, on our website and there's a link in the report on methodology. And the idea being here is that we want to be very transparent and also so every time we meet with a fund manager and they want to know more about impact reporting, then we share our methodology mm -hmm. with them. But also what we do a lot is to uh, brainstorm with fund managers, um, organizations on sort of what are the next steps, you know, how are we going to you know, improve on what we're doing. It's, it's very much a, a journey we, we are on. So we've got um, one of our team members who is um, only de dedicated to... Um, um, to that work, imp impact reporting, and then engaging with a number of organizations. So, yeah, really the idea is, um, I think you can't really be um, isolated on your island. You, you need to, um, you need to, you know, to, to, to work alongside, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Perfect. And then we, we, uh, we already talked about how you track the funds and, 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 and where you invest in and how they're delivering on their strategies. And also you mentioned now that you work with them, you know, collaboratively. Um, and and then also uh, you 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 made a comment about how you actually check on the companies and the, the, they're investing in and how they're delivering on their promises. Um, and on the last uh, meeting we had the presentation, you know, you also talked about the supply chain yes. and the challenges around that. Do you want to just briefly, you know, mention that so that people understand sure. how how we are aware and then what, what you are aware and what what the market is trying to do about you know what happens down the chain. 
Yes. So no, you're absolutely right. So you, you know, you you can have a fantastic product uh, or service which is helping to, to tackle one of the goals we we just mentioned, but if you're doing it at the expense of the environment in terms of your manufacturing process, or in terms of you know how much you're paying your staff, you um, if they're not um, getting a, a decent salary, then you know you, your net impact is questionable. So really, the idea is that you're absolutely right. When you measure the impact, not only do do you want at the company level to look at the impact achieved by the product and services, but you also want to look at the operational side of the business and see, you know, how much, you know, how they how they're sourcing their raw materials, for example, you know, um, how how much they're paying their staff, um, are they trying, you know, to reduce their, you know, their, all their sort of impact on 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 the environment, and that's really. Um, you know, really important to us to have the sort of that the, the big picture and, and that impact. Because what you want to avoid is um, being led by a company, uh, if you want, and their marketing spiel potentially telling you this is all the good things we're doing. And and we see, for example, some uh, companies. Let's say, for example, uh, it's quite topical. You know, I uh, talk about Shell. We talk about you know Exxon. Those sort of big or major companies. They're making big announcements around the fact that they're going into renewable energy, or you know they want to, you know, reduce their the carbon footprint. So fair enough. You know, they might be reducing um, the the you know the carbon footprint linked to the extraction of the fossil fuels from uh -huh. the ground. And this is the data they're reporting on. The data they're not reporting on is how much, sorry, how the fossil fuels they've extracted is then being used by the cars and the and the trucks, and what impact it does have on the environment. Yeah. So yeah, definitely you want to have independent view on on what the company is is disclosing, and then pushing them for further disclosures if you don't know enough about it. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, just for, for reference as well, so that, you know, in case people haven't thought about it, but some of these organizations, I think uh, well, I think we were talking about JSK in one of the, the meetings and uh, they have like 26,000 kind of uh, suppliers, right? So mm -hmm. it's sometimes it's quite hard to police, you know, all of, and then behind those there are second and third levels, right? Uh, but there are organizations, you know, trying to work on this and that's something that perhaps we'll cover in another one of the, of the episodes of Impact Leaders. Um, so now, if we move to kind of the evolution and, and traction of impact investment, um, uh, coincidentally, I think last week uh, in a recent Bloomberg interview, uh, TPG's co-founder and co-CEO Jim Coulter, I don't know if you, if you happen to know him, but uh, he was highlighting that uh, private equity and impact investing are the two core areas of attention uh, from families. Uh, I'm assuming he was mentioning family offices there and institutions right now, uh, and, 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 and that 65% of the people that they're talking to, I'm, I'm assuming he was alluding to some kind of survey, uh, expect companies to be the drivers of change and, 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 and the change of you know, what's happening in the world. Um, so, so today, you know, uh, impact investors are kind of starting to attract mainstream, you know, you know mm -hmm. private banks, you know, including Partners Group. Uh, we mentioned on on the last uh, episode uh, of, of impact leaders, uh, Lombard Odier in Switzerland, uh, and AXA Investment in France. Um, and then there are some companies in the UK uh, that are kind of getting more behind this in the private equity side. And obviously, you are a, 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 a great example, right? Um, but what what have you seen that has you know changed? You know, so you mentioned mm -hmm. that you started here with the portfolios in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, but what what have you observed that has is changing and is happening? You know, for for impact investing to be mentioned, you know, by people like by, by like Jim Coulter. Um, I think you know what has changed is um, a very strong um, rise in awareness that uh, two things that we need to address, you know, the many challenges we're facing. And two, actually, we can do it while also generating a financial return. And um, I think, you know, on, on, on the first point, you know, these, you know, you mentioned, you know, the United uh, Sustainable Development Goals in 2015, agreed by, 100 and, uh, by over 150 countries in the world. Um, that was um, a turning point because it was the first time we had, you know, a call to action a very clear call to action to corporates, to um, companies, sorry, to corporates, to um, uh, governments, to individuals about what are the 17 most pressing issues to be tackled. And at the same time, we also had the Paris Summit 
you know, on the, on the climate um, summit in, in, in 2015, at the end of 2015. And also there was um, a key turning point because, again, we had most countries in the world agreeing that they will do their best to limit the increase, you know, in temperature below the two degree um, uh, level that um, that you know a number of scientists are saying that we could get into into a lot of troubles. So, in 2015 was a, a key um, turning point. I think the probably another turning point, probably more UK focused, was um, uh, the Blue Planet documentary. Mm -hmm. You know, around the plastic. I mean, over the last. 18 months it's just amazing how much you know plastic has been in in the day-to-day -day discussions yes. you know yeah. and how much actually companies have changed their um you know their their processes or their behaviors trying to uh, bring down the 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 um, the use of single-use plastic. And, um, you know, with all those things happening, and also, you know, there isn't a day when you, when you, s when you don't see um, in, um, in the newspaper or, in the, or on TV uh, a journalist uh, uh, not talking about um, climate change or, or social issues. So, you know, it's, it's all around us. But then also, I think what... So that's in terms of, you know, people know that something has to be done. What I think is happening is a growing number of evidences, you know, studies, reports, showing to those in, um, investors, particularly the institutional investors, um, that um, they can make that positive impact while also generating a financial return. And actually, even telling them that if you don't take sustainability issues into account in your, in your, in your, in your process or in your investments, um, your investments are at risk. And, you know, and oil, for example, was uh, is a big example around the risk of stranded assets and and how much money you could lose in the future by not taking, um, uh, for example, carbon pricing into your into your um, into your modeling. Um, so, and and so that's probably the sort of two turning points. And then the fantastic news, you know, working with financial advisors on my side is that um, clients are bit more proactive with the financial advisor saying you know this is what I want to do you know I've, I've heard about it there's a number of um, I would say more mainstream asset managers who really understand that there is a demand and there's a fantastic uh, investment case for impact investing and have launched that proposition so you know clients get aware of that uh, and then they go to their financial advisors and say um, my financial advisor, I, I would like to, 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 to have some of my investments making an impact. And, and then those advisors, you know, they come and talk to us and say, okay, um, so can, we tell me, can you tell me more about, um, about your portfolio? So I think there's, an, there's, a, there's a combination of, uh, of, um, you know, of um, you know, uh, media pushing for it, uh, asset managers realizing that there's a, a great investment, also business case for it. Yeah. And also, I think clients being more willing to... Uh, to um, to align the investment with the values. Excellent, excellent. And and what do you think are the biggest challenges now that we have in the next, let's say, we have eleven years to achieve sure. these goals? Yes, um, I, I think people don't realize the scale of investments needed to achieve these goals. I mean, a recent um, survey by um, by the GIN, the Global Impact Investing Network, um, and the United Nations said that we need five to seven trillion dollars a year of capital so i mean i mean that's just mind-blowing so at the moment we we're probably doing less than a trillion a year so we, we're definitely not there so it means that you know uh, if we want to achieve those goals you know it it means you know everyone needs to get involved but i think you know not only you want to you you know you you are sort of being asked to get involved to to uh, to to make that positive impact, but also because there's a fantastic you know business case and investment case here. You know, if you have developed a product which is helping to reduce let's say carbon emissions or which is making uh, people's health um, better, uh, or if you're Im helping to improve um, uh, the education being provided, then you've got a fantastic market uh, to to address. Mm. And, and, and the market, which is there today, but also which is growing in size in the future. So those companies, they've been doing really well over the last year, but they've got the prospect for them in the long term are, are even better. So I think to me is that the, um, the fantastic story is that you have your cake and you can eat it, and that's what we need to tell clients. One of the stumbling block, and then 
so if I go back to the, the financial advisors, yes, but the, yes. the industry I, I know well, I think these, one of the stumbling blocks is the financial advisors who um, are, in, in general, uh, so if I generalize a bit, is that they... Um, they think about it like ethical investing, which was all about the screen out, and and they don't really want to have those conversations with the clients, maybe because they don't feel comfortable enough talking about it. So I think people like us and you know and and uh, financial bodies, we have a role and a duty to spread the message, explain why impact investing makes sense for um, a private client and and a charity and and a pension fund. Um, yeah, so that's um, another challenge. And I think as well, we need, um, uh, maybe my last point, we need regulation mm -hmm. uh, to help us uh, spread the word. You know, we we need to, um, I mean, not only we need um, governments to be examples of, of and leaders of, of change, but also we need a framework to help people um, make that positive impact in terms of, you know, in terms of suitability of products, um, in terms of... Um, in terms of availability of products, so we we, we need um, we, we need I think definitely the um, the regulators to step in and help spread the message and, and make it easier for private clients, pension funds, charities, institutional investors to to get involved in impact investing. Excellent. So if I, if I replay that, what I hear basically is around focus on um, uh, improving potentially policies. Right, mm -hmm. from the government side uh, for them to actually you know just uh, kind of create that more awareness right uh, and a framework uh, the regulators to try to um, support you know the, the the actions that you know companies want to take and we need to take so that individuals have access uh, and can invest you know directly and, and, and understand what they're doing uh, and this uh, if I understand correctly as well a bit of a, a almost like a, again awareness and training uh, yes. around you know the, the financial advisors to try to get them um, to um, to um, to get their clients, uh, individuals, to actually you know step up as well, uh, and then from our perspective, I guess the responsibility on the banks. Uh, um, well, we have independent financial advisors, but we also have you know large banks as well that they have you know huge teams, uh, and they you know hold a lot of funds for for, yeah. for many of the retail clients, right? So uh, it's something that you know another one of the. Um, uh, people that we interviewed in the podcast, you know, was highlighting about. Um, so, uh, because I was going to ask you, so is that great collaboration, right, between engaging, uh, participating, educating, uh, and obviously, you know, we can throw in there philanthropy and other things, right? Um, so, uh, spread the message, you know, training, access, all of that together, that's, that's what we're saying. Exactly, yeah. Perfect. Um, and if we jump quickly to, like, what is available today, right, yes. and current financial instruments, right? So, um, uh, kind of what what is the, and and then maybe talk, touching a little bit and reopening the, the the question around, you know, what is the role of you know, financial financial institutions, you know, in using current products to support and accelerate, you know, impact? Uh, so there is a, a split between, let's say, you know, most people, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, as you as you refer to, uh, high net worth individuals uh, uh, and, and institutions, you know. Um, we have uh, requirements from regulators today uh, where, you know, m mainly sophisticated investors can invest uh, uh, and then you have, but you have a model where people can invest as little as, you know, 50 pounds per month, right? So um, uh, uh, just to kind of reiterate and, 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 and sediment that, you know, so how, how do people do that? So today, basically, they just come to you uh, and they, um, uh, and then just to clarify, because they can do it through their financial advisors, as well, uh, yeah. and they can use some platforms as well, right, where yes. they can allocate directly without even coming to talk to you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes, you're absolutely right. There's there's two um, there's two channels. You know, either they come directly to us, where we've got um, in-house financial planners, and also they can go and talk to their own. Uh, financial planners who can you actually write through the platforms invest invest in our yeah. portfolios and and we talked about a kind of patient capital right so uh, how long do people have to wait until they can uh, kind of get their money back do they actually have to think you know five ten twenty years or or, um, or is it liquid in sure so i mean yeah uh, you're absolutely right there's there's two things is how much you should um so the, what's your sort of investment horizon should be and your liquidity of your investment. So in terms of your investment horizon, I think it's um, 
it's commonly sort of said that you know if you you need to have at least five years in okay, terms of your perfect. investment horizon i think for any type of investment um uh if it's not a, a cash product um so that's what you need to have you know at least in in mind but then what's really important is that you know mr and mrs smith tomorrow their situation might change so this is where the liquidity of your investments is really important so we only invest in funds which are you know daily liquid um so if tomorrow you needed your money back then within the, within a week you'll get your money back so 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 that's you know that i think really important this is although it's passion capital um it's also liquid capital yeah. um yeah. Perfect, perfect. Um, and then about creating new instruments, you know, you mm -hmm. did mention actually, you know, and this kind of, I know that we're jumping a bit from kind of retail and, and, and some of your, you know, client customers on that aspect, and then we are jumping to like the bigger market, right? Um, but we have, uh, you know, impact bonds, you know, which is, uh, or, or green bonds, which is one that is kind of more developed market, you know, that mm -hmm. as people know it, uh, I, I, know I have heard, but I haven't worked with, you know, coral reefs, insurance, you know, P2P projects. Uh, you mentioned the fixed income uh, products, you know, from, from Simon Bond. Um, uh, there are some dev equity convertibles. It's a social tech exchange. I think somebody mm -hmm. was mentioning to me about. Uh, is there something? Uh, do we need all of these, or, or, or is there something that we're missing? Or I, I think yeah. I think we. Um, I think what we need, we need, um, uh, we need to see more of those uh, funds and you know being launched, you know, across you know many asset classes, and um, with you know different themes that they're supporting. So yeah, I think we. Um, we are encouraging a lot of the asset managers we work with to explore and also go beyond some a number of um, of them and what's sort of quite, I would say, uh, topical at the moment is to talk about ESG, you know, environmental mm -hmm. and social yes. and governance criteria, which uh, is more and more embedded in, in uh, every uh, fund manager's um, process. And with a number of those fund managers, we're telling them, it's good you're looking at the operational side of the business, but you're not going far enough. You don't have the big picture of the company. You should also focus on the product and services. Um, so we definitely sort of, um, you know, uh, pushing fund managers to, to to look at the the, the overall uh, impact of a company and and not only you know uh, cherry picking. Um, and and the the great news is as there is a growing demand from the end clients, um, being the institution and also the prior clients. To make that positive impact, they they all realize that actually they need to build, you know, their proposition to to meet those um to meet this demand. And you know, I think it was um even um uh, the CEO of BlackRock, yeah. um, I think just earlier in the week, um, he said that you know sustainable investing it will will, will become mainstream. So it's uh, I think you know we you every every pe pe person you listen to um is is talking about it, but they're talking about it. Not not because it's it's uh, it's you know it's fashionable, but because it makes sense. Okay, but 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 in summary, we're saying if you are a retail, you know, uh, Mr. And Mrs. Smith investor, just try to focus on put your money aligned to your values into uh, simple products as you know through your financial advisor, which is going to go into funds, which is going to go into equities, yeah. uh, uh, and potentially into debt. Uh, and then uh, for the largest institutions to actually not only focus on, let's say, green bonds, but then look at, you know, where else they can actually put their funds, uh, potentially into, again, funds of funds like yourself, like yours, um, to actually make that impact, you know, more, more um, um, you know, real. Yeah. Exactly. Um, just a quick one, uh, in case you have any advice for the actual companies looking for funding that then may, may actually go to some of your uh, uh, funds where you're investing. Uh, anything that you recommend to them to focus uh, on or, 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 or what growth levels, sure. you know, are, are they ideal to be at, you know, to approach this type of uh, investment? So in, in terms of the... Um in terms of the uh, the companies we work with, they are already listed in the market okay. on the equity side, and on the bond side, they tend to be already relatively of a larger size. So, for for those companies to really appeal to us, uh, what's really important is that um, are they providing us with enough data 
uh, which you know will give us conviction that they're making that positive impact. But not only you need to give that data, but you need actually to build a framework to collect that data. And you want to go, because one of the key goal of impact investing is not only to measure the outputs, so i.e. the impact that you've achieved Let's say over a speci- let's say over a year, mm-hmm. but actually, what are the outcomes? Uh, looking at more the longer term impact, but to be able to measure the longer term impact, you need to build a framework so that you can sort of collect that impact over time, and then uh, and then measure measure it measure the outcomes over times, and um, and that's you know that's. Um, Something we're just starting to see. You know, it's uh, let, let's be honest. You know, we, we we're not there yet. But a company which is which is very clear about their intention and very clear on how they're going to collect data and very clear on how they believe they will make an impact. Um, definitely will be, you know, you know, appealing to us, provided obviously that they've got the right business model. Yes, of course, that they are sustainable themselves. Yes, yes. exactly. Okay, um, so we're kind of come into the last uh, kind of themes and questions. So uh, I just wanted to check with you in terms of um, uh, EQ, you know, and the future of EQ, EQ uh, uh, investors and, 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 the, and your growth. Um, what does the future look like for you in the next five, ten years? Uh, well, I, I don't have a crystal ball. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, what, it's would you, what would you like the future to look like? Um, I mean, one, I really would like the future to... Um, Uh, to look like is to is to see more uh, private clients, you know, being aware that you know they can make that positive impact, and while also uh, uh, meeting their financial returns. So, um, so I'm 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 hoping for you know our message you know to be spread across you know many communities, regions. Uh, cities, um, uh, networks. So really, we're pushing, you know, all our clients, all people we work with, to spread the message, and um, and there. That's, that's uh, I mean, what I would, I think, you know, there's, I mean, just some stats quickly, but there's um, there's about 50% percent of people in the UK who would like their investment to make a positive impact, but two thirds of them have never been offered any proposition like that. So, you know, it's, um, I think, you know, we, th- there's a gap here in terms of what people want to do and what they're able to do and what they're being proposed and offered. So my, my sort of my, my dream is that, you know, would be that, you know, in five years' time, ten years' time, everyone is aware. And then it's a personal uh, decision whether or not they like the concept, whether or not they want to go further and invest. But at least I would love them to be aware it does exist. Okay, uh, and then in, in, and in more specific terms, um, how much do you want to grow as as a fund? So, do you want to double the 120 into you know 240, or are you do you have any specific targets that you are aiming for? I mean, we don't really set um, ourselves targets. So, with a number of our clients, they are on a journey themselves. So, they um, you know they might have. Um, Dip their toe in the water, you know. Get to know the what impact investing is all about. We've got regular updates with them, quarterly updates, going through company examples, the impact report as well on an annual basis. So, as they're getting more on board with the story, they can see the returns they're generating. Then they can themselves increase their location to impact mm-hmm. investing. Um, so, I mean, for us, the idea is not to become the biggest. But um, but to be the best in what we do. So you know, I think it's uh, the, the 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 last thing we want to see happening is size. It's at the expense of the quality yes. of the um, of the experience uh, that the client you know uh, receives. So I think you mentioned some of that on your website actually. Yes, uh, exactly. So you know, there's you know we we I mean uh, we I mean uh, we are all and you know top management as well. We are all very careful in terms of. Um, you know the feedback we're getting from clients. Um, we actually measure that on our client portal. Um, we're very pleased to see uh, how positive the feedback is from a client. But again, you know, we keep asking the questions with client surveys. And we very, we yeah, are very careful about you know the experience they're getting to make sure that you know we're really doing our job. You know, the, the idea is really to be the the best, not the biggest. Yeah. Yeah, but that, that said, you you did uh, since I think you mentioned since John uh, since since, um, since John uh, Spears joined the company, um, you know you've been setting up the the structure and 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 the processes and everything to be able to basically manage you know much more than what you manage today. So if yes. if, if, if if you have institutional investors interested in coming and talking to you, you are you, know, you will you would like that. 
Yeah, of yeah. course, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. We've got room for growth, definitely. Perfect. Um, and uh, how can get how can people get involved uh, with EQ and the next stages of the company? Any specific kind of uh, uh, recommendations sure. or, or call to actions? I mean, uh, definitely. You know, I encourage them to look at our website. Um, they can you know contact us directly but but the, you will see also on the website you mentioned the financial health check we also have the online calculator so people can have a look at you know this is um how much they would like to invest and then they can have a look at how much impact they would have achieved over the last year so there's 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 many as well you know blog articles around sustainability and around financial planning that clients can have a look at and then of course you know if they would like to discuss it further they can uh, fill in an, uh, an inquiry form and if it's a financial advisor there's also an inquiry form that they can uh, fill in and, and we'll, g we'll be in touch with them perfect um, and uh, as since you know this uh, the podcast is called impact leaders we talked a lot about impact and impact investing um, uh, and now just as we come to to get close to, uh, to, to a close uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit about you so that people sure. know who Dam uh, Damien Ladeau is uh, so how, how did you manage to be appointed head of impact investment here at IQ Investors and, and how, how did it happen that you evolved sure. into this into this part of your career um, I think um, I think I've been lucky yeah. uh, I mean I was uh, I was working for as I like saying for one of the least ethical bank you can think of and uh, it's Mary Lynch uh, I was there in 2008 where we were that close to go bankrupt um, and um, and uh, you know it, it was a fantastic experience in terms of you know how much you learn from those big uh, uh, institutions but um, I'm, I'm sorry to say that you know the the client is not always at the center of their mm -hmm. uh, of or, you know of, of of their yeah of their the operations business, yeah. Yeah, yeah the business yeah exactly um, and um, as um, you know and I got you know in touch with uh, with EQ um, um, back in 2011, 2012, and I really loved um, the concept of impact investing. And then also, um, I feel really empowered by you know that project that I had to work on when I joined on my first day in 2012 was you know how can we make impact investing into the mainstream? And um, I, s I mean, I. I found it, oh, that's fantastic, you know, I want, I, I want to work on that. And then alongside you know, a number of other people who are still around here, learned a lot about impact because we are doing on the private equity side. So, you know, we did, uh, we were the first one in the UK to, um, um, to have our uh, impact being audited by Deloitte. Um, so, you know, you, you learn a lot from all the people around you. Mm -hmm. And then also actually it's very interesting because as an, as an individual, you you change yourself as well. It's interesting how you you think about you. You're more conscious of the impact you have on the planet and and to the society. Um, so that's interesting because not only I've you know been managing those portfolios and helping to develop our proposition here, but I think as an individual as well, I've I think I'm I'm on that journey where you know day after day I think about okay, what can I do better? And and, and from that perspective, what what drives you today? You know. So uh, what drives me, I mean, um, obviously one of my, I mean, when I wake up in the morning, you know, it's, um, it's with joy that I go to work and sort of talk about impact investing, spread the word, and, and also through the, the management of our portfolios, also show to clients that they can have the cake and eat it. So that's, you know, really... Uh, um, one of the reasons we uh, obviously I I I, uh, I love my job, but also you know it's um, um, I'm a father of uh, of two daughters, so it's, it's 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 very fair to say I know it's a it's a bit cliche, but when you have kids, you you think about life a bit differently, yeah, I can really and and you think about the future as yeah. well, and what kind of future do you want to leave to them? And actually, and um, we were talking about it um, early on um, offline, uh, JP, but you know also. You know, we are all going to live, you know, sort of maybe longer than maybe our grandparents have or our great grandparents have, uh, have, uh, have done. So, you know, you know, for the many decades we will still have to, to live in, hopefully in this, on this yeah. house, then uh, if we don't act on it today, we will be potentially in a, in a difficult proposition in a few decades time. So, yeah, so all this is driving my thinking. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm far from being perfect. Yeah. But I think if we at least conscious of the impact we have and conscious of the fact that we can, all of us, actually make that positive impact and help that change to happen, um, then um, I think we'll be in a much better position in a few years' time.
Excellent. And if you remind me asking, this is something that came up on one of my last interviews, you know, is, uh, do, you, do you have anyone that inspires you? Um, uh, it's, or that uh, inspire you through this process? Uh, it's... Um it's a it's a very good question. Um, I mean, it's um, uh, as it happens. Um, Even if it was a book or a sure. documentary, by the way, yes, it doesn't have to be an individual. Yeah, I mean, it w uh, yeah, I mean, uh, w we could definitely talk about as I was sort of learning about uh, impact investing. Um, um, if you talk about, we could talk about uh, Mohammed uh, Yunus, uh, who you know uh, launched uh, macro fi uh, finance in in, in Bangladesh. Um, uh, you know, about what thirty years ago. So that's uh, so that's definitely quite um, inspiring. Um, but actually, there's um, there's uh, quite a few books I've read uh, who have really opened my mind. There's one, a French book called uh, Tomorrow, which is I really like because it's about what can we do today to uh, to, to 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 drive change. Uh, that's really a book I, I, I. But then probably the book I talk a lot about the mo at the moment. I know it's very topical, but uh, it's called uh, No More Plastic, and it really inspired mm -hmm. me because not only it's sort of um, you know uh, giving an idea of how big the challenge is, but I really like that book because it's again a call to action, and um, it was m it was eye opening to me how much plastic we have in our day-to-day -day life and and how much plastic does end up in the ocean and actually how much we can have an impact. So I've actually, every people sort of I meet with or sort of I uh, talk about it. And uh, so, yeah, it's... Um, it's tangible, this will right? be sort of It's very yeah, tangible exactly. and visible. Yeah. Yes. And, um, and then this is maybe for the, for, the, for the younger listeners as well, right? So what would you tell a, 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 a Damien that is, you know, 20 years younger or, 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 or just pe perhaps you know, before you start in university or just coming out of university uh, about, you know, to embark in a new career or, or life yeah. project? So, um, so I think, you know, what's really interesting is that, um, as, as we all know, you know, the job available today will be very different from the job available for for uh, for young starters uh, in, in 10 years' time or 20 years' time. I mean, clearly, I mean, there's... Um, we just recruited someone from um, um, a master's in sustainability from... Um, Imperial College, mm -hmm. and the n the increased interest for sustainability across the co corporate companies is just mind blowing. So definitely, you know, if you want to do a career around sustainability, I think this is a job which is going to be there for for the future. So definitely, you know, explore that option. And there's so much you can do around sustainability. You know, either either you know getting involved with charities, either you know um, looking at the environment, looking at society, measuring the impact. There's, there's so much you can do. So I think this is definitely my uh, as definitely what I'm going to tell my daughters is that okay. you know if you want to get into sustainability I'll, I'll I'll help you as much as I can so today in financial institutions is compliance tomorrow is going to be sustainability e exactly right? that's so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and uh, and uh, as as a leader right so you know you you manage uh, you know a, a team here but at the same time you do work with a lot of uh, you know, leaders uh, across, you know, your, your your investees, across the funds you invest in, uh, and you actually, you know, talk to, you know, institutions and companies, you know, uh, alike. So what, what uh, in your view, you know, your personal view, what does it take to be a, a, a leader and, and perhaps to do what you do? Um, well, that's, uh, uh, I don't know if I would call myself a leader, but uh, I think the, the, the one thing that um, I, I hate, um, seeing is uh, people not sort of keep advancing you know I think if you need to always um, challenge yourself you know your convictions you know your your knowledge and always need to push the boundaries so you know all the people we uh, sort of I'm lucky enough you know all the people I work with they're all that sort of same mindset is that this is what we do today this is what we know today this is not good enough so let's keep pushing the boundaries, and and that's I think that's really what I mean. If I think you know you need when when you go to work, you know you need to have that sort of that that passion that what you do is is making that impact, and I think you're making that additional impact back to additionality mm -hmm. by by always pushing boundaries. Excellent, excellent. Um, and your best recommendation to others that want to get involved with impact investing. Um, it's uh, in at sort of a person personal level for their money or for um, it's more you 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 pick you pick I, uh, I mean which which I area would you like but you know could be sure yeah. I mean I would definitely encourage you know anyone to turn their financial advisors if they have one 
uh, in terms of impact investing. Uh, I think that would be quite interesting to see what the the, the, the feedback they're getting. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, it's uh, I think impact investing. It's um, what we call common sense investing at at EQ, and uh, and so I would I think it's really worth exploring for anyone who wants to align their investments with their values. Okay, I'm I'm basically just to finish on that to call. Uh, what is the last call to action that you would ask, ask anyone and everyone you know to to do? Um, well. Yeah, Google Impact Investing. Look at you know what it is all about. Uh, get involved. Potentially talk to us. And um, yeah, I think you know there's there's that such a fantastic sort of uh, feel good factor by getting involved. So I really encourage you to get on board. Perfect. And if anyone wants to get in touch with you personally, Damien, any pe pe preferred? Uh As, I mean, I'm on I'm on LinkedIn. I always respond to messages. So you know, feel free to contact me on on LinkedIn. Yes. Perfect. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Uh, well, bye for now and uh, until our next episode of Impact Leaders. Thank you, JP. This was Impact Leaders. Impact Leaders is brought to you by Fast Forward 2030 and Real Changers. Visit fastforward2030.com to learn how to include the global goals into your business models and realchangers.com to find talent and careers with impact.